Hello, hello. Yo, what up? I am back with a mustache. Wanted to do a little end of year list cleaning. I needed to set up a re-engagement campaign and an automation. So figured I might as well record a video of what I'm doing in case it helps anyone else. I guess it's worth just calling out why it's important to clean your list. There's a lot of reasons for deliverability. If you continue to email people and it, who are not engaging, opening, clicking your emails, it actually sends a lot of negative signals to Gmail and other inboxes and more of your mail will go to spam. And so take my word for it, I won't bore you, just trust me, it is important to clean your list. And so what you can see here is I actually cleaned my list manually twice earlier this year. You can see it right here and then again right here. Uh, what I wanna do today is actually set up an automation so I don't have to do it manually every few months. I'm going to create an automation, set it, forget it, never have to worry about it again. Um, to get started, I'm actually going to create a segment first. I think just out of curiosity, I am curious how many readers am I set to potentially remove from my list, right? And so I did this ahead of time. What I did was unique opens is exactly zero within the past 150 days. So they have not opened a single email that I've sent in 150 days. Sign up date is before a relative date of 150 which just means that they signed up more than 150 days ago. And then lastly, status is active, making sure that they are active on my list and receiving emails. As you can see here, this had already loaded. There's about 5,400 subscribers who meet those qualifications. So these are people who have not opened in the past five months. Um, it's worth calling out the open rate. A lot of people get alarmed and think that this is an error. It is possible that they had opened previously to five months ago and just not recently, um, which is why this is not necessarily zero. Um, but these are people who have not opened in the past five months at least. The next step is actually creating the automation, which I went ahead and did so you didn't have to watch me click a bunch of things in real time, but I will run through it as well. So the first step is just creating a trigger. We actually at Beehive built a trigger specifically for this use case called an unengaged trigger. And so it allows you to choose days without opens, days without clicks, days without opens or clicks. That is the most aggressive. And I'll start with that. And I chose 150. So again, they have not opened or clicked a single email in 150 days. They will be entered into this automation. The next step is sending the actual re-engagement email. I'll go ahead and show you what I created here. It is an email that looks like a lot of my other emails. Um, but the main thing here is you want a specific call to action. So if you want to continue receiving this newsletter, simply click right here. And then otherwise I'll automatically remove you from the list. And then one more chance, click here to stay on the list. It is not important where you send them. I believe I'm just sending them to my landing page. Uh, what is important is that they take an action to click on something, which signals that they want to remain on your email list. So that is the second step. Third step is a time delay. I wait 48 hours. And then there's the true or false branch. And what the true or false branch allows you to do is create whatever conditions that you want. I created a condition that says days without clicks is greater than equal to two, which means that they had received this email, remember 48 hours ago. I give them 48 hours to click to signify that they want to remain on the email list. And if they do not, then I'm going to remove them. How I remove them is this update subscription step. I am changing their status from active to inactive. And I actually created a subscriber tag, which Beehive makes it really easy to do. Essentially, you can group subscribers by whatever you want. It could be that their favorite color is blue. It could be that they signed up via webinar. I created a tag called churned, which will signify that these readers have gone through this re-engagement automation and did not opt back in. Thus, they were removed from the list. And then inversely, if they did actually end up clicking on that email, then I'm going to remain that they are active. I'm not going to remove them from the list. I'm going to add a subscriber tag called re-engage, which means that they were previously unengaged. They had not opened in 150 days, but they received this email, they clicked, and now they're remaining on the list. And so full funnel here, they enter if they have not opened or clicked in 150 days. They receive an email asking them to click if they want to remain on the list. I give them 48 hours. If they do not click, they are removed. If they do click, then they remain on the list. 
And I just created this, you know, a few minutes ago, but each day people who qualify at that 150 day mark will be entered into the automation. I'll be able to track all of the progress throughout. As a little bonus, I actually went back to that segment and I exported a full export because I was curious, who are these 5,400 subscribers I'm about to remove? Is there anything I can learn about them? So I exported the CSV, I uploaded it to Claude and had them do like a pretty basic analysis of just where are these subscribers coming from? And as you would expect, a lot are referrals and referrals just means like they came from a certain web page or direct signups. But what jumped out at me is actually Facebook DCT 102 and Twitter CPC make up about 15% of this list. These are both paid acquisition channels. So I'm literally, I had previously paid to acquire these readers and I'm now potentially removing them. It's worthwhile, I think, just as you're understanding how to acquire and grow your email list, whether or not you're spending money efficiently. And so this gives me a bit of pause to at least like look into these two campaigns and see if it's actually a well-performing campaign or if I need to scale some things back. Um, but long story short, that is that is the re-engagement campaign. That's how you set it up. That's how I did it in BI, both from a segment and may, and to do it automatically via an automation. And last but not least, I would be remiss not to ask if you sign up to my weekly newsletter, Big Desk Energy, it kicks ass. Um, hopefully you read it frequently and you'll never end up on my re-engagement campaign. Uh, but thanks for watching.